Hotep. Hotep means is a greeting that means peace in the ancient Kemetic language. And Mwalimu means teacher in Kiswahili and is equivalent to the English word professor. My name is Mwalimu Melody Mishari Van Putten, and this is Mwalimu Dropping the Knowledge. One of the devastating results of our history being interrupted by ruthless invasions of Euro Europeans was what I call grand theft and larceny. The invaders stole everything they could get their hands on. Our people, land, resources, treasures, language, spiritual practices, and culture. Basically, our peoplehood. As stated in the definition of larceny, the theft and possession of what belonged to African people was perpetrated with the intention of never, ever returning it. This is why racism was not eliminated with the end of enslavement. It simply morphed into colonization, second-class citizenship, Jim and Jane Crow, systemic racism, gentrification, and other ubiquitous forms of discrimination still operating today. Theft and usurpation of our unique cultural inheritance is particularly egregious as the colonizers planted seeds of inferiority that continue to operate in unconscious ways of being, whether it is a rejection of our Africanness, acceptance of a European image as representative of God, or allowing our children to be indoctrinated with colonized curricula that marginalize who we are as a global people. The systemic, institutionalized marginalization of our history, particularly the fact that African people were the first people to live on the earth and establish the foundations of world civilization is criminal, but it effectively upholds white supremacy. This calamitous condition is global with institutionalized miseducation as common policy, whether in Bermuda, the United States, island countries in the Caribbean, or the continent itself. If this seems outrageous, it is. Imagine having the experience of reluctantly presenting the African Foundation timeline to African college students in Tanzania and receiving a standing ovation. Why? Because colonization in Africa has had the same devastating effects on their psyches as it has on the black people of the African diaspora. Worse, the theft of our culture has resulted in identity confusion. We don't know who we really are to the point where it is not uncommon for black people, children and adults to declare, I ain't African and be offended if called African. Of course, I remember growing up at a time when just being called black was an invitation for a fight after school, but I digress. So while I will share thoughts on the wholesale theft of our peoplehood and the fight for reparations, I will start this conversation poetically by asking, when did we stop being African? If you don't know where you came from, you can't know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. That is a traditional African proverb. Oh yes, we're on the path. Don't know where we're going, but we're going, stopping along the way on the avenue of materialism and individualism and spending way too much time on I don't have a clue drive, also known as Consciousless Boulevard. When did we stop being African? Was it during the Middle Passage? Crammed in nasty slave holes 
with the brokenhearted, delirious, sick, and dead losing our minds, jumping overboard, arriving to the new hell of the new world? Was it then? Or was it when we became unwilling victims of the horrendous crime of grand, I mean grand theft? Stole our names, stole our language, stole our God, stole our culture, stole our fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, children, babies, and damn near stole our souls? Was it then? I ask you, when did we stop being African? Was it after we got here, worn, torn, and broken? Was it after we worked the land and built the empire? Was it after we struggled, toiled, bled, and died fighting, running, resisting, and determined to be free? Was it then? No? Then tell me, damn it, when did we stop being African? If it wasn't the name changes, nigga, colored, negro, black, if it wasn't Willie Lynch, miseducation and misintegration, when in God's name did we stop being African? This is depressing. Worse, not too many people are even asking the question. The question again you ask, when did we stop being African? Some will say, it really doesn't matter. We're in the West and it's the best. Get over it and get on with life. And for God's sake, stop wearing that African stuff. Can't you see it's holding us back? You appear to be a 60s holdover. Ashe, don't even think about teaching the babies. Are you crazy? Can't you see we're on crack consciousness? from iPads to cell phones to big screen TVs, you need to get over it and accept the fact that most of us left our minds in Africa and we like it like that. When did we stop being African? We stopped individually in our everyday unconscious actions. Unlike the rest of the human family who have never Stop being British, Italian, Portuguese, Chinese, Japanese, Jewish, Swedish, Canadian, Mexican, Spanish, Turkish, Danes, French, Russian, Romanian, and every other group with very little melanin. But when did we stop being African? Like the process of history, with the past, present, and future, we stopped being African yesterday, today, and tomorrow, in our everyday self-hating way, we stopped being African. We died a living death, felt by our children who sit on the walls, hang on the corners, populate the prisons, live purposelessly on the streets, and waste their genius. Yet, Somewhere in the depth of our being, we do know we are African. It's in our walk. It's in our talk. It's in the way we dress and style. Cool pose, akimbo stance, epic memory. Holla, it's past time to ask the question. It's time to answer the question, reclaiming the African and all its glory, pain, and potential. It's time to be African. Question, do you know what time it is? We'll be right back.